Speaker here. Look, firstly, I want to celebrate that I live in a country where homosexuality is decriminalised and has been so for 25 years. 25 years ago, when we decriminalised homosexuality here in Ireland, I was living in London. Although far away, I was aware of activists like David Norris and your work, though not the full extent of your bravery and your personal sacrifice. I was aware of the political courage of Maura Gagan Quinn and others to make the change. 25 years ago, I had just given birth to my son, my second child. Whilst carrying him, so besotted was I with his sister, who's two years older. I worried about whether I could summon up the same love and devotion for him once born. I need not have worried. One Monday morning at 8 a.m., 25 years ago, in 1993, my drop of golden sun came bursting into the world, a cuddly, tactile, energetic little creature, a curly-haired, smiling, curious, quirky, inquisitive, affectionate child who elicited much love then and still does. This child who grew to love Thomas the Tank Engine, read voraciously, who talked and talked, read early, made maps, wrote stories, still does, undertook spurious surveys, played hurling, represented his college and university challenged, lived in Fez, Beirut, Marseille and now in Paris, made, makes and keeps up with his lovely friends from close to home and all over the world, who excelled academically, full points and first. This son, who speaks many languages, Arabic, French, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, uh, stimulated by love interest, and of course, Irish, to mention but a few. This young man, who has so much to offer the world and us all. In 1993, when my beautiful son was born and homosexuality was decriminalised in Ireland, I didn't know then that it would mean so much to my son when we moved back to Ireland as a family in 2003. That decriminalisation would have a direct bearing on his rights, his equality, his ability to be treated as a first, not second-class citizen, his right not to be criminalised, not to be criminalised for his sexual orientation, for who he loves and would love, his right to be himself and make his mark. In 1993, far away in London, taken up with my life of children and work, I didn't fully appreciate the multiple harms, hurt and suffering of people in Ireland living in fear, health sometimes compromised in the context of criminalisation of homosexuality. People stigmatised, bright people, able people, deterred by the laws of their land from being open and honest about their identity and their family and in society, preventing people from engaging in civil and political life, depriving society of their full contribution, people sometimes condemned to lead double lives, sometimes very lonely people, people to whom we most definitely owe an apology and glad that the government is supporting this motion which offers this overdue, though sincere, state apology. And thank you to Senator Jed and the Labour colleagues for bringing this motion in front of us. 25 years ago, I didn't know that decriminalisation of homosexuality would be a milestone in, that, in much that followed, including marriage equality, and I too want to acknowledge the role Senator Bottomer and others made to make this happen. 25 years ago, in 1993, I didn't expect to be standing here in Shana Deren making the speech celebrating the 25th anniversary of decriminalisation of homosexuality, aware of and in a position to highlight and advocate for that which remains to be done for full equality and rights for LGBTQ. LGBTI people. So as we celebrate, we also need to press on with urgent matters material to LGBTI people being able to exercise their full rights and well-being in Ireland. Well, there is access to PrEP, something my colleague Senator Fintan Warfield has been calling for, and I sincerely hope we're making progress there. Around this time last year, a young person from Belong To uh, gave evidence to our uh, hearings on child mental health. We were told that not being accepted for who you are has serious impacts on the mental health of our young people. LGBTI people are two times more likely to self-harm than their non-LGBTI friends, three times more likely to attempt suicide. Three years on from the passage of the marriage referendum, LGBTI couples are still waiting for the promised parenting rights. In the run up to the marriage referendum, uh, we, we were promised that those rights would be passed. Uh, uh, LG, many, many non-biological parents are still strangers to their children. I understand our legal strangers to their children. I understand that this matter falls between the Department of Health and Department of Justice and there are complexities. I know too that the delay in the commencement of this part of the Children and Families Relationships Act is calling, causing a growing concern. So I would welcome if the Minister could give us an update as to where this is and to say that it would be a fitting uh, tribute to the 25 year uh, anniversary to see, uh, to see um, this part of the family uh, uh, the, 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 um, 
the Children and Family Relationships Act fully enacted, meaning so much to my son and all the other sons and daughters of Ireland. Thank you. Thank you very